So the other story, of course, that was kicking around yesterday, well, it was from um, Wednesday night. Kelvin Davies uh, asked a tricky question about Oranga Tam- Tamariki and its performance. Basically shot, uh, shot back at Karen uh, Chaw, who was an ACT MP and is of Māori descent. Um, shot back, uh, shot back at her that basically she wasn't Māori enough and she should cross the bridge into Māoridom and stop being so vanilla in her questioning. And it really was a you're not Māori enough uh, deflection uh, away from the question by a senior member of the Cabinet. To describe what has happened since we, uh, the Prime Minister uh, expressed concern at Kelvin Davis' attitude, he originally was all staunch, I'm not going to apologise, and then yesterday afternoon it emerged he had rung, privately rung, uh, uh, Karen Chaw and had apologised. And Karen Chaw joins us now. Karen, I have to say that it is rare uh, that so quickly someone who has been perhaps been criticised for something they've done turns around and personally apologises to someone. I also thought it was very gracious about the way you have essentially accepted that apology, haven't you? Oh, yeah, I appreciate that, Sean. I mean, at the end of the day, he has apologised, and I've taken that as a genuine apology. And I really hope that as a whole of Parliament that we can move forward and learn to have, uh, you know, decent debates without this um, personal attacks. Mm. Well, I want to give you the chance to get back to what your question originally was about. Because whether or not he's apologised, we're not talking about what you wanted to talk about. And what was the concern you were raising in the question that you asked originally? Oh, my, my concern really is that uh, uh, Oranga Tamariki has just um, uh, recently signed a, a contract with um, John Tamahedi, one of John Tamahedi's charities. And the, some of his charities are now under investigation for, for essentially bankrolling um, John Tamahedi and the Māori Party's political ambition. Yep, up to the tune of about um, half a million. Uh, yeah, exactly, which which is not small change, right? And and uh, the consequences of that will be, if, if it is deemed that he's done something wrong, that the charity will be um, taken off the charity's list. Register, uh, yep. and my Yeah, and my concern is, well, what is OT going to do about that um, if that charity is struck off? And, and they are in a contractual that, relationship with that charity. Yeah, yeah. yeah I get and you. will that will that um, OT and that charity's um, contract end or partnership end? Um, and then out of nowhere came the personal attack. Yeah. Uh, so, Karen, did you ever get uh, an answer, a suitable answer, or a sufficient answer to that question from Kelvin Davis as a minister? Well, no. So I guess I'll be um, having to ask that question again at some stage um, and keep an eye on what's going on with this investigation and make sure that Oranga Tamariki um, is is, um, partnering up with um, organisations that we can trust will use the the money um, for the best interests of our young people. Mm. Our most vulnerable young people, um, I might add, and so we have to do our real due diligence um, when when the organisation is looking at who they partner up with, um, and what the end goal and the outcomes we want to achieve from that contract. Mm. Karen, meantime, we had uh, well, he's not your boss actually, and it certainly wouldn't in the context of the ACT Party and the ACT Caucus call him your boss. We had David Seymour on yesterday. We looked at this issue of the. Well, eugenics claim on the Māori parties, and the Māori party pops up everywhere here, the Māori party's website. Um, as a Māori, as a Māori in Parliament, what do you make of that that particular uh, piece of, I don't know, political propaganda? And are you disappointed they haven't responded to the uh, Race Relations Commissioner and removed those claims off their website? Yeah, uh, I'm hoping that they do the right thing and do remove that statement. Um, If you replaced um, Māori with any other ethnicity within that sentence, um, there'd be an outcry. 
and, and I really think that the Māori Party needs to do the right thing and just re- just remove that statement from their, their website. Mm. Karen, can, uh, I, uh, can, can I ask you, you are Māori, though you don't... I, I don't know, um, it seems to me you're a politician or you're, you're a member of a caucus and you're a New Zealander primarily. How difficult yeah. is, it, is it to be Māori or of Māori descent in a party that is so often accused of being racist or being white elitist or privileged? Uh, that, that's a really good question, right? Um, and I, I joined the ACT Party because I believed in the principles that the ACT Party stood for. And it's kind of difficult to be told that you, you shouldn't have the right just because you're a certain race um, to to agree with those principles. Um, and the principles I really agree with is is about personal choice, standing on your own two feet, and... Um, doing it for yourself and getting out there and making something of yourself um, and, and not, a, not allowing the government to come in and, and take over those decisions for you and, and having, a, but with that personal responsibility, uh, with that personal um, responsibility co- comes a, a lot of um, burden of, of making sure that you live your life in a way where you're not you're not affecting other people, right? Mm. And, and I really like that. As long as you are not affecting other people and you can live your life and be you. Uh, and, and and I enjoy that, that aspect of the Act Party. Do you believe that you as a Māori have a special place in New Zealand and have special privileges or rights above other New Zealanders? No, and, and, and I've said this many times, and I've said this publicly. Um, I have the same rights as everybody else in New Zealand. I'm a New Zealand citizen, along with every other New Zealand citizen, and we have the same equal rights as each other. I am no more special than anybody else. Mm. Maybe that's what Kelvin Davies is so upset about, that you have those attitudes. Oh, I can't I can't see why. Um, I think this is a beautiful country and, and the last day has proven that to me with the outpour of just support um, towards me and um, and just New Zealanders saying that they won't accept this kind of attitude and that really shows me how wonderful this country is. Mm. Um, Karen, it might have been too that they just smelt blood in the water um, and they were having a crack at Kelvin in a pretty nasty way. Um, I think this country, uh, people are starting to just have had enough of the division that's going on in New Zealand, right? Mm. Um, it's not just the Māori versus Pākehā or Māori versus non-Māori. Um, this goes deeper than that. Mm. And I think people have interpreted um, what was said that day in lots of different ways and taken it on personally in lots of different ways depending on their personal circumstance. Mm. And I think it just really shows how how upset New Zealanders are at the moment and how hungry they are for some real change. Yeah. The division is everywhere, right? Yeah. Whether it be landlord versus tenant, business owner versus employee, rural versus townie, Pākehā versus Māori. It just seems we're all fighting each other right now. And I think that this is just, is just the straw that broke the camel's back, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, people have just had enough. Yeah. What did, how long was your conversation with Kelvin yesterday? Oh, it was just a short conversation. Um, he he apologised to me. Um, Didn't he, sound he, like he, the Prime Minister was twisting his arm behind his back while he said it, though? Oh, I don't know what conversations they've had in the background, but I'm sure he was, <laughs> I'm sure he was told he needs to think really hard about um, yeah. what he'd said. And I'm sure they knew that um, what had been said was quite damaging and that an apology was the right thing to do. Um, and, and I and I I accept that apology as genuine. Yeah. Um, and we'll be and we'll be keeping an eye on making sure that this, yeah. this kind of behaviour doesn't continue, especially in the house. Yeah. All these right. are these are the New Zealanders and New Zealanders are looking up to us to set the example of how to behave and, and I'm hoping that moving forward we can all behave a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah, Karen because I'm devil's advocate and you've come on, so I have to ask you this question. 
Some people yeah. might look at your reaction to what Kelvin Davis said and you were a bit of a wimp and a bit of a snowflake. Yeah, you know what? It's it's not like I haven't heard these kind of comments before. Right? Yeah. I've yeah. been called a plastic Māori. I've been called a fake Māori. I've been yeah. called all kinds of but names. But as long as you know what you are, why should you give a toss what Kelvin Davis says? I think it was... This, this, this affected me more because it was done in such a public way. It was done mm. to degrade me as a person. Um, and, and and also, I, I feel that it, it degraded so many New Zealanders. And, and all I could think about was of other New Zealanders that would be hearing that and, and the hurts that they'd be feeling as well and the damage that it was going to do. So the distress wasn't just for me. It, w- mm. it was for other New Zealanders that would be looking at that and yeah. looking at our leadership of this country yeah. and wondering what the Karen, I have to say, on. I'm not a great fan of being outraged or insulted on other people's behalf, to be honest, though. That's, surely it's up. You can't second guess how someone else might yeah, feel but about I, that. I, I, I see the hurt out there in the communities like recently. Um, I've been out in the communities and I've, I've heard the hurt that all this division is causing. Um, and, and I feel right now it, it's the worst it's been in a very long time. Mm. And, and we need to come together as one country and one people. And, and this is just not helpful. Mm. And, Karen, and, do you think you I were bullied? You bullied? Do. You're going to use the B word? Were you bullied? Oh, I don't like using that word. Um, I think that the intention was to be a little bit degrading towards me. Yeah. And, and But I, I don't like using the bully word like that. There's people out there that are genuinely bullied um, constantly over and over again, and they go through hell and back. And, and I would hate to um, mistreat that word. Mm. Well, Karen, as I say, I think it was mature of you to accept the apology. And in a grown-up world... We move on here and we get back to the issue that you were raising in the first place and I'm glad that you explained uh, to me and, and the people listening today what that issue was and I thank you also very much uh, for fronting on the platform this morning because some other bullies oh, will tell you you shouldn't. Me. Good on you. Thanks, Karen. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. Have a good That is Karen Chaw. She is uh, the ACT MP who has acted with dignity. I think acted with dignity in accepting the, uh, the apology of Kelvin Davis who basically, um, let's paraphrase, called her a plastic Māori when he was getting a bit of heat on Aranga Tamariki's uh, relationship with John Tamahiri and the Waipara Trust or the National Māori Authority, which it seems are the major bankrollers, perhaps illegally, of the Māori Party. And the Māori Party, man, they are in some shtuk. So they have got the Race Relations Commissioner calling them racist or calling their website racist, and the Charities Commission is now probing John Meharry, their party president, for basically taking money from a charity and spending it for political purposes on the Māori Party, which is, I hate to say, against the rules, quite clearly.